We interrupt our normally scheduled newscast for an update on that shooting that took place earlier this morning in Brooklyn. Officials in New York City preparing to give an update on the situation. Let's take a listen. Engaged in the situation, I wanted to let him know that the people of the entire state of New York stand with the people of this city, this community, and we say no more. No more mass shootings. No more disrupting lives. No more creating heartbreak for people just trying to live their lives as normal New Yorkers. It has to end and it ends now. And we are sick and tired of reading headlines about crime, whether they're mass shootings or the loss of a teenage girl or a 13 year old. It has to stop. I'm committing the full resources of our state to fight this surge of crime, this insanity that is seizing our city because we want to get back to normal. It has been a long, hard two years. That's what we crave, that sense of stability and normalcy. And this is what the mayor and I are going to continue to work toward. And I thank the partners, the brave people of the MTA, the first ones who had the sense, the drivers of the train, to leave the station to make sure no more victims could be hurt. The NYPD, FDNY, state police, everyone involved in this has one purpose, and as to stop the insanity of these crimes. You'll hear now from our fire department. I want to thank them for being there to help us defuse a volatile situation. But we'll be giving continued reports as this day unfolds. Again, we ask everyone to be careful, be cautious, report what you see. It is likely that someone out there listening to this is going to help us lead us to that individual. You have a description of what they're wearing. You know the details. But this is the day we pull together as New Yorkers, united in a common purpose to say no more. And that is what I'm going to continue to do as the governor of the state of New York, working with our local partners right here. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon. This morning, the FDNY received reports of gunshot victims in the subway. Thanks to their quick response, we were able to treat 16 patients. Ten of those patients are suffering from gunshot wounds at this time, and five of them are in critical but stable condition in our local hospitals. Yes, we have 16 total patients. Ten of them are suffering from gunshot wounds, and five of them are in critical but stable condition at this time. And I'm going to pass it over to the MTA for an update on our subways. Okay. First of all, we have to thank the NYPD and the FDNY and the whole team who've done so much to protect us and help immediately to recover from this situation. And I also need to acknowledge the MTA workers who had, were, were, had the, the, thought, the foresight to immediately move a train that was on the platform, the R train, out of the station so it could carry people to safety. That was, that was smart thinking. Right now, uh, B service is suspended, W service is suspended, the D and the N and the R are running with suspensions and some shuttle buses. Um, and folks should check the website for latest. Obviously, it's a disrupted uh, day, um, but a lot of the system is, in fact, running. Um, I just want to say one thing on a personal note, which is on 9-11, I stood on 4th Avenue and watched people, New Yorkers, come back from that tragedy. And I thought, I watched New Yorkers help each other and storekeepers walk out and give people water. That was the same thing we saw on the platform today. We saw New Yorkers in a difficult situation, an emergency, helping each other. That's the subway riders. That's who New Yorkers are. Every day they're showing people in the subway, which is our public space, that New Yorkers of all varieties can come together in small spaces and get along and create something bigger. That's what we remember in these emergencies, as well as the tragedy and the thought for the, for the quick recovery of the victims, is New Yorkers are incredibly resilient just after, as they are in every emergency, and we thank them for what they've done, and we thank the governor and the mayor for their leadership in all of our recovery from COVID and from every one of these challenges. So just to reiterate, we're going to be li very limited in what we are able to answer in questions. Uh, just to also underline our partners here, we got Mike Reagan. Uh, Mike Regan is the assistant special agent in charge of the Joint Terrorism Task Force with the FBI and NYPD. 
John DeVito from ATF, who's helping us with tracing efforts and investigation. Uh, he's the special agent in charge for New York City. We have the Brooklyn District Attorney, Eric Gonzalez, who is also here. And, uh, of course, Chief Ken Corey, Chief of Department and First Deputy Commissioner Ed Caban. Uh, we'll start off with questions for the police was commissioner. The okay, commissioner. Was the shooting on the train or on the platform? Was the suspect on the platform or in the train? And was it, it was, did it all happen in the thirty six street station? Or what happened down in 25th Street? The suspect was in the train car. The shooting began in the train car. Commissioner, can you give us some more detail exactly what happened in the car? Did the suspect say anything? What type of weapon did he have? And what was going on inside the car as this all happened? So, as I stated before, we're only able to get a limited information because it's under investigation. As the train was pulling into the station, the subject put on a gas mask. He then opened a canister that was in his bag, and then the car filled with smoke. After that, he began shooting. Commissioner, does this appear to be random? Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Guys, one time. Hang on. Commissioner, uh, does this appear to be random? Any idea why this individual did this and did this here? We do not know the motive at this time, but we're not ruling anything out. The injuries that are not gunshots, are they shrapnel wounds? What are, what are the other injuries that were not gunshots? Fire department. We went to fire departments. There are a variety of other injuries from smoke inhalation to shrapnel uh, to panic from the incident. When you say shrapnel, what would the shrapnel it, it could be from anything. It's still under an investigation at this time, so it could be a grazing from a bullet. It could be from the panic after following the incident. Not from an explosive device. Here's a quick recap from our special report. We just learned from the commissioner for the NYPD saying that this incident is not being investigated as an act of terrorism and there were no life-threatening injuries as a result from that shooting. 18 News will continue to follow this breaking story and bring you the latest on air and online at MyTwinTears.com. We'll also have more coverage coming up tonight on our 18 News at 5, 5.30 and 6. 18 News at noon will be right back after this.